Welcome again to this channel, and in this video I focus on the Ark of the Covenant and the three items that were found in it. Just remember to subscribe and to share. The Ark, famously known as the Ark of the Covenant, was made up of two parts, the chest and the lid or the cover. The chest measured two and a half cubits long, by one and a half cubits wide, and by one and a half cubits high. It was made of acacia wood and overlaid with pure gold. It was fitted with four gold rings at each of its four feet where the poles for carrying it were inserted. The poles were also made of acacia wood and overlaid with gold. The lid which is known as the atonement cover is also translated in some Bible versions as the mercy seat. It was made purely from gold. It measured two and a half cubits long by one and a half cubits wide. Two cherubim were hammered from this lid so that they were one piece. The cherubim on opposite ends were facing each other with their wings spread up and overshadowing the cover. According to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4, this ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. It is interesting to know how the three items got deposited in the ark and their significance to the Israelites. Firstly, the stone tablets of the covenant. When the tabernacle was set up and ready for use, the stone tablets of the covenant which contained the Ten Commandments were put in the chest before the separation the holy place and the most holy place. Suffice to say that it is the stone of tablets of the covenant that qualified the ark to be called the Ark of the Covenant. Secondly, the jar of manna. On the second month in the desert after they were rescued from the Egyptian bondage, the Israelites were grumbling against Moses. They desired to have the meat in their slavery than to die of hunger in their desert of freedom. So, God provided for them manna to satisfy their hunger. In Exodus chapter 16 verses 32 to 33 we read, Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded, Take an omer of manna and keep for generations to come, so they can see the bread I gave you to eat in the desert when I brought you out of Egypt. So Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer of manna in it. Then place it before the Lord to be kept for the generations to come. Thirdly, Aaron's staff that had budded. In the book of Numbers chapter 16, Korah, Dathan and Abiram led an uprising against Moses and Aaron's leadership. In a show of disapproval to their rebellion, God wipes them away by opening the earth to swallow them together with their followers. The next chapter of Numbers 17 narrates how God wanting to seal the priesthood of Aaron, led Moses to bring this leadership contestation to an end. Each tribal leader was to bring a staff and their name was to be written on it. Aaron was to have his staff with his name written on it too. God says in Numbers chapter 17 verse 5, The staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout, and I will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. And in verse 8, the next day Moses saw that Aaron's staff, which represented the house of Levi, had not only sp sprouted, but had budded, blossomed and produced almonds. Finally verse 10 reads, The Lord said to Moses, Put back Aaron's staff in front of the testimony, to be kept as a sign to the rebellious. For generations the three items remained in the Ark of the Covenant. However, according to 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 9, at the time King Solomon was transferring the articles of the tabernacle from the tent to the temple he had just built for God, only the stone tablets remained.